Hello, and look who's back in the studio. That's right, folks. It was getting cold outside. It wasn't getting cold outside. I just happened to be back in the studio. Anyways, welcome back to the Stealth Touch channel. Today, we are going to be looking at something, well, something super simple, yet so conducive to the Camino experience. That's right, folks. Drying your clothes. I know. Sounds like a simple thing. You wouldn't think someone would have to make a video about how to do it properly, but here we are. Anyways, before we even get to that, ready? And welcome back, folks. Okay, so I was a little vague or maybe even ambiguous in the beginning of my intro, but drying clothes, it's a thing. It's a thing we often don't think about when we're packing. We have everything else to think about. I know I often start off my videos with the same thing, like, you know, things that we overlook. It's like, if we're overlooking everything, what are we looking at? It's a good question. What are we looking at? What are you looking at? Stop looking at that. That history is stored somewhere. No, no. What I'm saying is we're focusing on everything we probably should be focusing on. However, once we get to where we need to be, which is the Camino, priorities change and shift, and, well, you end up in damn clothes sometimes. Yeah, because you planned in poorly. We, you know, everyone's like, you trust the Camino, do that, you know, the trail angels, so on and so forth. You, you know, you're depending on a lot of folks outside of yourself. And if you depend on yourself first, it's guaranteed every time. That said... There are lots of places, well, okay. First off, once you get to where you're going, which is the albergue in midday, hopefully you get there midday, maybe get there in the evening. I say, if you wanna wash your clothes, I washed my clothes every day. You don't need to do that. You can wash them every other day if you plan properly. If you're wearing merino wool, or if you bring maybe three pairs of underwear as opposed to two. But I found myself washing clothes every day in some shape or form. Not all the clothes I brought, but whatever was dirty, I'd wash. And it was just a good rhythm for me. I'd get to the albergue, I, you know, check in. And the first thing I do, well, the first thing I did was take a shower. Just like get dirty clothes off of me. Once I was done with my shower, I'd take care of my feet and whatnot. And in all of that noise and madness, I would be washing my clothes too in the sink. If I was in a private room, maybe, which can happen sometimes if the albergue is a full, you might find yourself in a private room uh, or even in like a hotel, hopefully a cheap hotel. Uh, depending on which community you're doing, that is highly probable. And if that's the case, yeah, as you're taking off your clothes to get in the shower, throw them in the sink, let them soak while you're showering. Kill two birds with one stone. So yeah, you wash your clothes as, just as soon as possible before you start preparing dinner, you know, before you do anything else, get the clothes washed and hanging out to dry. Only because you're in Spain, northern Spain, in the spring, can be damp. Can, and as with anywhere else, April showers bring me flores. So it's, they, they're, they're humid days. There's moisture in the air. So it can be difficult to dry stuff. I kid you not. And you know, some people might disagree with this because on their Camino, they saw sun every day. God bless y'all. But for me, I didn't. And oftentimes, um, if I didn't get my clothes out there soon enough or quick enough, I didn't have enough time in the day to dry them and pack them up before the next day. The thing is, you want to have everything, at least for me anyways, packed up and good to go the next morning so you can just get the heck out of there without disturbing other pilgrims and without fumbling around in the dark. That means your clothes need to be dry, off the line, and packed up by the time you're in bed. So, that said, wash your clothes as soon as possible and get them hanging out to dry. <sighs> and you will assume, and assume correctly, that there are clothes lines or racks in albergues, in most albergues and hotels. And oftentimes, well, albergues there will be. However, depending on how packed the albergue is, those lines can be totally taken up with other people's drying clothes. Depending, again, how late in the day you get to the albergue. And I've experienced this a few times. Other times, when I was forced to stay in rooms or hotels, uh, there was no line. You may have a window, you may have a bathroom, but no clothesline, so you have to improvise. And that's what this video is all about, improvisation. Yeah, not the fun type of improvisation. That's mining, that's not improvisation. Improvisation is like, well, let's get to that. First and foremost, once you're done washing your clothes and you wrung them out, dry them with a towel. Pre-dry them. Towel drying is what it's called. Put the clothes, and I've demonstrated this in past videos, but put the clothes in the towel, roll it up, and just press, you know, lots of pressure as you're rolling it up. Just to squeeze out any dampness you can. Microfibers work best for this, but if you get, if you're stuck in a hotel or staying in a hotel, they have 
often free towels there. Use their towels because you might want to keep your towel dry or just if you have other towels to use, use those first. And yeah, so towel dry them and then hang them out. If there's no clothesline to be found, if you're in a hotel or some other like uh, individual room, there may be a private bathroom. In that private bathroom, I found there's often a towel drying rack. It depends on the time of year, whether it's turned on or not. But if it's turned on, utilize that to dry your clothes. You can dry your clothes super fast that way because they're heated racks. Yeah, talk about luxury. So utilize that. If not that, if you have t uh, socks, maybe you made the mistake of bringing cotton socks. If you did, you should know better. But yeah, whatever, you're working with what you have. If there's a hair dryer to be found there, and sometimes there is, use the hair dryer to dry your socks on a mid setting, not a high setting. Because depending on what the fibers are, it can damage the uh, technical ability, even of cotton, if it's too hot. So, but utilize the dryer. Uh, the hair dryer works great in a pinch. Next, if you're, okay, here's the thing too. If you took your clothes off the line, you wanna pack them before you get to bed, as I spoke of, and they're still damp, Another great tip, which I believe comes from the military, is to wear them to bed. If it's damp, your body heat while sleeping will cause the moisture to evaporate and dry them in your sleep. And if you wake up in the middle of the night, then you can take it off or you can just wear it into the next day. I don't do that, but people do do that and it does work. So if the socks are still moist, I hate that word, damp, wear them. If the t-shirt's still damp, wear that. And you can wear another shirt over it just to increase your body heat and get under the blanket, sleeping bag, sheet, whatever you're using, and your body heat will cause that dampness to dry or evaporate faster than what it would be just hanging out by itself in the cold, cold northern Spain air. So that's another tip. Okay, then you could, like me, bring something like this. This is by Sea to Summit, and this is actually really, look at how small this is. Fits in the palm of your hand. This is a clothesline, and this would often come in handy especially when the lines were full with other people's stuff. I could hang up this line, you know, and it's built into this pocket. So there's a hook right here. I can hook that around something, then hook it on the string. Oh, you, you see what I'm getting at. Hook it on the string like that. And so it's around my finger. And the other side has another clip. And also on this line, there's little beads. And now the idea is that you would put like your sock through here or something and pull the beads together and you don't need clothespins. In theory, this is supposed to hold that piece of clothing for you on the line. Kind of works. I never really fully understood how to use that. If you've mastered that, you can leave that below in the comments. However, for me, I just, I brought clothespins. I didn't actually bring clothespins. I stole clothespins. No, I didn't. Well, I, no, I didn't steal clothespins, but I did bring diaper pins. You know, honestly, I did bring two or three clothespins, now that I think about it. But you don't necessarily need to. The, the clothespins I brought were kind of bulky and big, but they had outside hooks, too. So it was like a clothespin with a hook on it. So I felt like I could get more bang for my buck with that. If there was limited space on a line, I could, you know, hang up one sock with the clip and then hook the other sock over the hook. And they would pretty much share the same space, drying space. But at the end of the day, uh, baby pin diapers are where it's at. So this is one option. However, this is, I can't remember how much it is. Actually, it's this much. Yeah. And by Sea to Summit, super small, it weighs nothing. This is an option. These are the diaper pins I spoke of. So super easy, they're fat. You know, if you, if the spirit moves you and you wanna get punk rock right through your nose, keep it out of your bag, save space, put it through your ear maybe. Again, whatever floats your boat. But these are great. So you can pin these through your socks. Unless your clothing is really delicate, some merino stuff you might not want to use these on. And if that's the case, then yeah, bring some small clothespins. But for the most part, these are great. Because then if your clothes aren't dry, and if you didn't wear them to bed, and you will do this, there will be a day where your clothes aren't dry, and you will forget to do anything I mentioned. If that's the case, you can just pin them directly to your backpack as you're hiking and let them dry throughout the course of the day. This is typically seen with socks or towels. Um, even undies. Some people have no shame. <laughs> what you really need is just a few pins. I say bring as many pins as you bring clothes or maybe one less. Cause again, you're not gonna be necessarily washing all your clothes at the same time. But I probably brought five pins and two clothes pins. My last Camino. Um, you can b bring a clothesline as well. I recommend you bring a clothesline of some sort. And lastly, 
these. True Earth, True Earth. Well, it doesn't need to be this brand. See the Summit, in fact, makes small. Do I have any? I don't. But See the Summit also makes small soap leaps, little tiny leaps of soap that you can use, one time use. These are the same thing. And I actually think these are better. They provide more soap, but they're just laundry strips. So this is the, the detergent you use. Feels like foam almost. You can break this in half, use it in the sink to wash you know, a few pairs of underwear, a shirt, your socks, whatever the case may be. One load, Camino load or Camino clean. And that's all you're gonna really need. And again, I wouldn't bring this packet. I would just take probably, I don't know, a few sheets of this because you are gonna be cutting them up in a Ziploc, put them in, you know, your entire laundry kit in the Ziploc and put it in your pack. Now, here comes the tip. You don't need any of this stuff. It's true. Well, you still need the pins, but you don't need to go out and buy your own line. Or, I mean, you could. This, again, it's super cool. However, it's so basic. And most places, as I mentioned, often have lines or clothes drying racks. Depending on when you get there, it's going to depend on the amount of space there and if you get to use it or not. So don't plan for it to always be open, but also know that you don't have to spend money on one of these bad boys as cool as it might be. All you need is this, not a whole roll of twine. What I do is I lay out all my clothes that I'm gonna be taking in a line next to each other and I make the length, just a fist on each end longer than the space the clothes take up. Again, you're not gonna be drying all those clothes at the same time, so it doesn't really matter. You could probably get away with, let's see, four feet of string. So this is no, no space at all right snip that off and clips tiny carabiners you can get carabiners even smaller than these i believe these are one and a half inch carabiners you can get them even smaller see where this is going and what you will do is this that's it tie the carabiner to the end of the string and the other end now you have an instant clothesline. This packs up so small. Look at this. Put this in the same Ziploc, and if you need it, it's there. Instant clothesline. This costs probably about $5 to make, if not less. And chances are you already have the twine in a drawer, in that junk drawer. The first one. No, the one under the other junk drawer. Yeah, that's where the twine is. And the clips, most keychains have these. Most hiking gear that you have, have a clip on it for whatever reason. So you have these probably already. If you want to get technical with it, you could get like waterproof twine. This is cotton, I believe. So it's going to absorb some of the water, but it's not a huge deal, especially if it's hanging in the sun. So yeah, instant closed line this way. You could also, rather than just wrapping the string around these and packing it in a Ziploc, you could put it in its own, own little bag, little drawstring bag. Look at that, it's even smaller. Now, if you want to bring even less, you don't even need to bring the string. You could use a shoestring. Yeah. If you don't mind taking the shoestrings off your shoes, you could use those as a quick impromptu clothesline. You can also use floss. If you carry floss in your bathroom bag, if in your overnight bag, floss also works as a quick impromptu clothesline for underwear, socks, whatever. It also works for just repairs. You can, you know, bring a needle. You don't need to bring thread. You can sew with floss. Um, one of the little... Uh, churches I walked into, there was a, an elderly woman, a, a nun, I believe, putting little necklaces over, little saint's necklaces of Mary over different pilgrims, over pilgrims as they walked in, rather. It was a very moving experience. However, the thread that it was made out of was really delicate. In fact, I walked out of the church and I just tugged on it a little bit and it broke. <laughs> Funny story. I was walking down, you know, I met up with a friend weeks later and she was talking about that experience. I was like, oh yeah, I met her too. And I was like, but the thing is, the thread was so flimsy. I broke it so easily. She's like, really? She's like, mine's still in t And as soon as she did that, it broke. Did I make this happen? Who's to say? However, I was like, quick fix for that, because it's what I did. Floss. Yeah, so if that happens to you, and it might not, but now that I'm speaking of it, I'm speaking it into existence. Does that work? I mean, funny things happen with Camino. If that's the case, however, floss. Floss can save the day in a lot of different ways. It's true, and yet, what do we do? We just, and then we throw it out. Waste not, want not, folks. Waste not, want not. Anyways, so floss. Again, if you don't want to bring the string, just want to bring the clips, you can use floss as a clothesline. And it packs down even smaller. So those are my quick tips, tricks, and hacks for clothes drying on the Camino. Wasn't that a short episode? Never do this. Why don't they ever do this? 
Why don't I ever do this? Because you're thick. Okay. I'll consider that. Anyways, folks, thanks for tuning in. If you got something out of today's video, if you enjoyed it, if you have your own tips in regards to drying your clothes or drying my clothes, uh, please leave them in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like, comment. Oh, we already spoke of that. And subscribe. It's very important, especially if you want to keep getting tips, tricks, and hacks thrown your way on a weekly basis. In fact, I, you know, I'm leaving on my next Camino in a couple weeks, so I don't know if I'm going to like it. You record more videos to drop as I'm gone, or maybe do some live from the road. Whatever you think, leave them in the comments below, and I will peruse them. In fact, I will answer you. It's true. I read every comment. Every one, sometimes two comments. I'll, I will read them. What's a pilgrim to do? Anyways, thanks again for tuning in. Until next time, well, you know how this goes. I spin around, but I'm not. Or I spin around this way, but I won't. And I say... Wapatua. No, that's Hawaiian for something. I say... Hey, one point, point, point. Two.